Hello, today I'm going to talk about monopsony. Imagine this monopsony faces a labor supply curve given by the following equation, and the monopsonist labor demand curve is given by 60 minus W. What we want to do is find the monopsonist equilibrium wage and employment level. The first thing to do is solve for each one of these equations, solve for W. So I'm going to take this labor supply equation and solve it for W now. If you do that, you're going to get W equals 5 plus 2L. I'm dropping the superscript on S just for simplification. So I took this above equation and I just solved it for W. I'm going to do the same thing for the demand equation. Just solve that for W. And we get the wage W equals 60 minus L. And again, I'm ignoring the D here just for simplicity. This equation here is technically known as the inverse labor supply equation. And the equation over here on the right is the inverse labor demand equation. This equation, the inverse labor demand, is also the I'll just abbreviate here, the, the marginal revenue product of labor. Uh, as you might recall that the labor demand curve is nothing more than the marginal revenue product of labor or some books might call it the value of the marginal product, VMP. So that's the demand side. What we want to do now on the, the supply side of the market is we want to solve for the marginal cost of labor. We want to solve for the marginal cost of labor. I'll just this, abbreviate that MC subscript L. Some books will call the marginal cost of labor. Some of your professors might call it marginal expenditure. Marginal expenditure. Some might call it uh, the marginal expense of labor. So there's a number of different words that are used to explain uh, the concept I'm going to look at here in a second. So with marginal expense of labor being uh, another common one. Okay, so how do we get the marginal cost of labor or marginal expenditure or whatever you want to call it? We're going to get that from the firm's variable cost equation. The firm's variable cost, I'll call it VC or some books might call it total variable cost. So the firm's variable cost is nothing more than the wage times the units of labor, W times L. What we're going to do is we're going to substitute this 5 plus 2L in for W in the variable cost equation. So variable cost equals 5 plus 2L, and that's all multiplied then through by L. So just simplifying. We got an equation for the variable cost. To get the marginal cost of labor, we're going to take the derivative of the variable cost equation with respect to labor, and we just simply get 5 plus 4L. So the marginal cost of labor, or marginal expense of labor, is 5 plus 4L. This is an important equation for us. One little hint here is that the marginal cost of labor function is going to look almost exactly like your inverse labor supply function. Notice that this is 5 plus 4L and our inverse labor supply function was 5 plus 2L. The only difference being is that the marginal cost of labor has a slope that is twice as steep. So given that this is 2, this is going to be 4. So you don't have to, in the future, you don't have to really go through all these steps to derive the marginal cost of labor. So just a, as an example, if somebody said the inverse labor supply equation was W equals 10, um, say, plus 1.5L, the marginal cost of labor is just going to be 10 plus 
2 times 1.5 or 3L. Okay, so that's what it'll simplify down to. Okay, uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to solve for the equilibrium level of employment. So let me get some space here. So the monopsonist is going to hire workers up until the point where the marginal cost of labor, marginal cost of labor, equals the marginal revenue product inverse labor demand, whatever you want to call it, which is just a 60 minus L equation. So taking our 5 plus 4L, 5 plus 4L, setting that equal to the inverse labor demand equation, which is 60 minus L, and now solving for L, the monopsonist will hire 11 workers. The monopsonist will hire 11 workers. To get the wage, what is the wage that the monopsonist is going to pay its workers? We're going to take this result and plug it back into the inverse labor supply equation. So the, the monopsonist wage is going to be 5 plus 2 times 11 or $27. So that's how you solve a monopsonist problem. I hope you found this video helpful.